Hello everyone, my name is Chen Zhang and I'm a thoracic pathologist at Wow Cornell Medicine. Today I'm going to talk about the role of biomarker testing in resectable non-small cell lung cancers and also the evaluation of pathologic response following neoadjuvant treatment. Here are the objectives. We are going to discuss the critical roles of biomarker testing in patients with uh, resectable non-small cell lung cancer per NCCN treatment guidelines. Next, we are going to review the updated method of choice for appropriate biomarker testing for those patients. And then um, we'll describe the best practice for specimen collection and handling to ensure the accurate evaluation of pathologic response for post-treatment uh, surgical resection specimens. And then finally, we're going to... Um, uh, introduced the established uh, post neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy related pathologic response scoring system to assess uh, the pathologic response in patients with resectable non small cell lung cancers. I'm going to discuss the topics with a case presentation format. This is a case I recently encountered. A 44-year-old female with a history of smoking, asthma, HIV, syphilis, who presented with cough for the last three months with small volume hemoptysis and posterior right upper chest pain. She was prescribed antibiotics, which did not result in any improvement. This is her initial chest x-ray and the CT scan. Uh, which show a right upper lobe long mass that measure 12.5 cm in the largest dimension um, that almost uh, completely occupy the right upper lobe. She immediately underwent flexible bronchoscopy and the findings include complete occlusion of right upper lobe bronchus with endobronchial tumor enlarged the lymph node at station 4R and station 7, and normal-sized uh, contralateral lymph nodes at station 11L, 11L and 4L. So she underwent right upper lobe mass endobronchial biopsy and EBAS guided the fine needle aspiration of station 4R lymph node. Uh, on the right uh, is a, a microscopic picture of the endobronchial biopsy of the mass that show a poorly differentiated non-small cell carcinoma. And the fine needle aspiration of 4R lymph node show the similar finding of tumor. So clinically, a young patient, 44-year-old female with excellent performance status, although with a large mass and the positive N2 lymph node clinical stage 3B, uh, she's still considered operable. So next step is uh, whether to test for biomarkers. Okay, let's uh, talk about the roles of biomarker testing in resectable non-small cell lung cancers. First, we need to know the NCCN guideline for the treatment of um, resectable non-small cell lung cancers. So this table on the left lists all the TNM staging for lung cancers. In general, the clinical stage 1A through 3A and some 3B are considered resectable. Basically, the, all the tumors within this red box here are considered resectable. Patient with clinical stage 1A, uh, that is small tumor less than 3 cm and uh, negative lymph nodes, those patients are treated with surgical resection only and surveillance. Uh, there's no uh, perioperative treatment uh, recommended per guideline. Uh, however, all the patients with clinical stage 1B or higher should be evaluated for perioperative treatment. 
So the perioperative treatment of resectable non-small cell lung cancer include preoperative neoadjuvant system therapy and the postoperative adjuvant treatment. For all patients with tumor 4 cm or larger and or positive lymph node, there is strong clinical uh, consideration for uh, preoperative chemotherapy plus immunotherapy or chemotherapy only if uh, there is contraindication to immunotherapy. Contraindication to immunotherapy include autoimmune disease, current use of immunosuppressive agents, and the presence of oncogenic driver of EGFR mutation or ALK rearrangements. So uh, for this reason, in order to know whether to add immunotherapy preoperatively, we need to know the EGFR and ALK uh, status. Similarly, for postoperative adjuvant treatment, uh, it is uh, usually chemotherapy followed by uh, EGFR targeted therapy or by immunotherapy if patient does not have EGFR mutation. For the chemotherapy, there are different preferences of chemotherapy agents for squamous versus non-squamous histology of the tumor. So it's critical to know the histologic type of the tumor. So in summary, uh, the biomarker testing are required for patients with clinical stage 1b or higher. Um, in order to evaluate the perioperative treatment, including immunotherapy and chemotherapy. For immunotherapy, we need to test the PDL1 status in order to predict the immunotherapy response of the patient. Uh, we also need to know uh, the EGFR and ALK status in order to know if there's a contraindication to immunotherapy. For chemotherapy uh, agent choices, uh, we do need to know the histologic type. So when necessary, uh, immunohistochemical markers of TTF1 and the P40 need to be done um, to tell the histologic type. So this is what we usually do when we receive a positive biopsy for non-small cell lung cancer, first we look at the, uh, morphologically whether it's a small cell versus non-small cell carcinoma. If it's a um, small cell carcinoma, it's uh, treated in a totally different different way. Uh, we're not going to go over it today. Uh, if it's uh, showing the uh, obvious Keratinization or squamous differentiation is called squamous cell carcinoma without any stains. Uh, if uh, there's a clear glandular formation or mucin production, it's called adenocarcinoma without any stains. Uh, if there's a non-small cell morphology with no clear uh, keratinization or glandular formation, we'll do a brief uh, immunohistochemical a panel of TTF1 and P40. If TTF1 positive, it's called a non-small cell carcinoma flavor adenocarcinoma. If it's uh, P40 positive, it's called the non-small cell carcinoma flavor squamous cell carcinoma. If both po uh, both negative, uh, we'll stop there and call the non-small cell carcinoma uh, NOS. So for all the non-small cell carcinomas, including squamous, adeno, or uh, non-specific morphology types, uh, they are all required to uh, be tested for the biomarkers uh, of uh, PDL1, EGFR, and ALK. Next, we'll spend a few minutes to uh, briefly introduce the testing method of this three biomarkers. So PDL1 is a co-regulatory molecule on the tumor cells. It can bind to the PD1 on T cells and suppress the T cell activities. The immunotherapy drug, also called checkpoint inhibitors, 
that you can、uh, block the PD1 and PDL1 interaction. So to block the immunosuppression of T cells. This is、uh, an example of the TPS scoring、uh, from this、uh, early paper in 2015. So basically,、um, it's a membrane stain. So it doesn't have to be strong or complete. Any type of mem membrane stain can be counted as positive. So this、uh, on the left is an example of a negative, totally negative, less than one percent of staining. On the right、uh, is the strong expression, almost a hundred percent of tumor cell staining. And in the middle is、uh, considered positive,、uh, but between one and fifty percent. So PDL1 expression level in tumor cells predict the response to immunotherapy. The PDL1 expression is detected by immunohistochemistry on formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissue or cell block, and reported as the tumor proportion score (TPS).、Uh, this is calculated as a percentage of、uh, tumor cells with positive staining versus the total tumor cells. Any、uh, TPS one or above. One percent or above is considered positive. There are several、uh, different clones of antibody. The three major clones, 22C3, 28.8, and SP263, are considered the equivalent in terms of、uh, efficacy. So there are a few caveat of、uh, the PDL1 scoring. Uh, because we only supposed to score the tumor cells, and、uh, unfortunately, all the normal macrophages will have this nice membrane stain of PDL1. So be aware of them. Do not count those as positive staining. This is an example of a tumor、uh, we had recently. So you can see the all the tumor cells enlarge the nuclei, atypical. Uh, looking, however, there are a lot of macrophages in the air space. When you stain this tumor with、uh, PDL1, we got a lot of positive staining cells with nice membrane stain. But if you look carefully, all the positive cells have small round nuclei. They are macrophages, and the large tumor cells with the large、uh, hyperchromatic nuclei, they are negative. So this tumor, as we score TPS score, will be、uh, less than one percent negative. So a little summary for the PDL1 staining is、uh, tested by immunohistochemical stain and can be used on uh, any uh, major clones of antibody. Uh, it's uh, recommended to test the PDL1 on all newly diagnosed non-small cell carcinomas. The result is expressed as TPS、uh, scoring.、Uh, remember, any、uh, membrane stain doesn't have to be strong or complete.、Uh, any membrane stain of tumor cells counts as positive.、Uh, be aware the macrophages will be stained positive; should not be counted. Next,、uh, EGFR mutation. So EGFR is a receptor tyrosine kinase on the surface of、uh, epithelial cells or tumor cells. Those tumors with activating EGFR mutations tend to respond to target therapy with the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. The most common mutations in EGFR are the exon 19 deletion and the point mutation of exon 21. The detection of EGFR gene mutation、uh, is a DNA-based test using the formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissue or cell block. Can be real-time PCR or Sanger sequencing or next-generation、uh, sequencing panel. Which、uh, the last one NGS panel is、uh, the preferred method because it's more efficient and can also detect other possible mutations at the same time. So back to our case,、uh, 
uh, our case have a non-small cell carcinoma with no clear uh, keratinization or glandular formation. So we did a quick panel of TTF1 and P40. Uh, the tumor is TTF1 positive and P40 negative. So it's called non-small cell carcinoma favor adenocarcinoma. ALK is another receptor tyrosine kinase. And the ALK gene uh, rearrangement has been found in a small subset of non-small cell lung cancers, about 5% of uh, the total cases. Uh, ALK gene rearrangement can happen between ALK and the several uh, fusion partners. The most common fusion partner is EML4. ALK G rearrangement can be detected by several methods, including immunohistochemical stain and FISH and the NGS panel. The FISH test using the uh, break apart probes uh, is the first uh, FDA approved method of detection for ALK G rearrangement. Uh, but quickly, about uh, less than two years later, a new uh, clone of antibody D5F3 uh, uh, was identified for uh, immunohistochemical stain for ALK gene rearrangement, and this is uh, was approved. This was uh, approved by FDA as uh, equivalent to the FISH method, and it was actually a pre preferred method because uh, the Ig stain is uh, so much quicker and inexpensive compared to FISH test. The ALK gene rearrangement can also be detected by the next generation sequencing panel as long as the panel uh, includes the RNA sequencing uh, because the fusions uh, has to be detected by RNA sequencing. We did the ALK uh, immunostain and tumor is negative for ALK rearrangement. And PDL1 expression uh, showed a TPS score of 90%. There's no EGFR mutation on the NGS panel. So in summary, this patient has a clinical st stage 3 B long adenocarcinoma with high expression of PDL1, no EGFR mutation or ALK rearrangement. So a decision was made to proceed with uh, the uh, preoperative neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy using this uh, standard regimen. So after three cycles of treatment, um, her chest CT showed a marked decrease in size of the tumor and marked decreased the PET activity as well. So now uh, it's uh, decided uh, clinically to do this right uh, thoracotomy, bilobectomy, and the mediastinal lymph node dissection. Now we move to the evaluation of uh, treatment response and the post-treatment pathologic staging. So for all the uh, lung cancer resection uh, after treatment, we need to evaluate the treatment response. So basically just to estimate the residual viable tumor. We do need to restage the, uh, the patient using the viable tumor size for post-treatment TNM staging. There are a few challenging areas in the post-treatment evaluation staging. So first, for the uh, gross examination or sampling of the tumor, it's sometimes hard to see the tumor bed after complete treatment response. So in this situation, the radiology imaging uh, can be very helpful. Uh, second, Second challenge is when uh, evaluate residual viable tumor size, when there are several multiple uh, discontinuous microscopic foci of viable tumor. We'll see some examples. So here are a couple of gross images um, 
taken from this uh, paper in Journal of Thoracic Oncology. So uh, to show you how we sample those tumor beds. When the tumor bed is less than three centimeter, like the example on the left, uh, we submit, we suggest submit entirely the tumor bed for microscopic examination. When the tumor is uh, large, larger than three centimeter, uh, we suggest to take full cross section of the tumor bed in half centimeter intervals and then map and submit the largest cross section of the tumor. So this is the treatment effect section from the CAP synoptic report uh, for lung cancer. So you can tell that uh, the only uh, required uh, information for this section is to report the percentage of residual viable tumor. And then uh, the percentage of necrosis and the stroma, including fibrosis and inflammation, are the optional points. So currently, uh, of course, when there's no residual viable tumor, 0% viable tumor is considered a complete response. And if there's less than 10% of residual viable tumor, it's considered uh, as a significant treatment response. And the rest um, will just report the uh, exact uh, value of uh, residual viable tumor percentage. Uh, when we look at a tumor like this example, on the left, there are necrosis, viable tumors, and some fibrotic stroma. We report percentage of each component uh, as uh, showed on the right. Or there's uh, alternative suggestions in the publications that when tumor when the fibrosis is associated with the viable tumor, uh, it can be considered part of the tumor. Don't have to estimate that part of fibrosis. We just overall estimate the large area of fibrosis and necrosis and viable tumors. Uh, in this example, we estimate tumor percentage, viable tumor percentage at 30%. So, um, when there's uh, only single focus of viable tumor, like uh, such as this picture showed, it's easy to estimate the tumor size. We just measure the largest dimension of this viable focus. When there are multiple small foci of viable tumor, um, it will be challenging to estimate the viable tumor size and to stage the post-treatment tumor uh, of T-staging. So there are four choices here listed uh, how to stage the post-treatment tumor. Do we use the whole tumor bed as this first choice? And method two is to uh, combine all the viable tumor sizes into a one larger size to stage. And third choice is to estimate the percentage of viable tumor and then multiply, multiply uh, this percentage with the tumor bed size and get this result as staging, for staging. And lastly, to measure the uh, largest expansion of all the tumor, viable tumor foci. So the current choice, uh, current recommended choice by the uh, multiple societies is to use the method three, uh, estimate the percentage, and use the percentage to multiply, multiply the tumor bed. So this is, uh, in summary, if there's a single focus of viable tumor, we measure the largest linear dimension of the viable tumor for T-staging. If there are multiple foci of the viable tumor interspersed among necrosis and fibrosis, uh, we give percentage of each component, and then we use the uh, tumor bed size multiplied percentage of viable invasive tumor to get the viable invasive tumor size and use this size for T staging. Okay, so back to our case. Uh, this 
patient underwent bilobectomy, and uh, the upper lobe showed this uh, uh, ill-defined fibrous scarred area that uh, measured 2.8 cm in the largest dimension. So it's less than 3 cm. And then the whole tumor bed was submitted for entirely for microscopic examination. Uh, this is a low power uh, picture of the tumor bed. You can see there are some uh, lung tissue there. And the majority of the tumor is shown here as uh, even this power. You can see there's a lot of fibrosis and necrosis. On high power, there's uh, extensive necrosis and some uh, fibrotic stroma on the right and this inflammation. There's another area with dense fibroelastosis and some granulomatous response and chronic inflammation and no viable tumor cells are identified. This is another area with some granulomas and a lot of uh, foamy macrophages, we call those denser granulomatous response. Again, no viable tumor cells. In this area with dense fibroelastosis and some, a lot of those uh, cholesterol clefts and some granulomatous multinucleated giant cell response. No tumor cells, viable tumor cells. Uh, this picture show a hilar lymph node here used to be involved by carcinoma. However, now the tumor is all dead, replaced by uh, necrosis and fibrosis. So after a careful microscopic examination of the entire tumor bed, there's no residual viable tumor identified. It's considered a complete treatment response, CR. All the lymph nodes examined are also negative for viable tumor cells. So the post-treatment pathologic stage is PT0 and 0. So no uh, post-treatment uh, I mean, no post-operative uh, adjuvant treatment is necessary. Patient is uh, followed by uh, surveillance. In summary, we discussed the two major questions today. The first uh, is the roles of biomarker testing in resectable non-small cell carcinoma. So basically, biomarker testing is required for all resectable non-small cell lung cancers of clinical stage 1b or higher. Uh, there are a couple bi uh, diagnostic biomarkers, TTF1 and P40, uh, for some tumors in order to tell whether it's a squamous or non-squamous histology. Uh, which is uh, important for choosing the chemotherapy agents. Uh, therapeutic biomarkers uh, include the PDL1, uh, EGFR, and the ALK. PDL1 is detected by immunohistochemistry to predict response to immunotherapy. And the EGFR is detected by um, NGS panel and the ALK is by IHC or NGS panel. Both of them are necessary to know if there's a contraindication of uh, immunotherapy. The second question uh, is to evaluate the post-treatment lung cancer resection specimens. For those specimens, extensive, careful uh, growing and sampling of the tumor bed is uh, important for the evaluation of treatment response. The treatment response is estimated by the viable tumor percentage uh, under microscope. And the post-treatment viable tumor size is calculated by the tumor bed uh, multiplied by the viable tumor percentage if there are multi-foci of uh, uh, viable tumor. Uh, so the post-treatment pathologic staging 
is uh, done by uh, using the viable tumor size. Uh, this is uh, important for the uh, treat post-operative uh, treatment and the follow-up and the prognosis. Thank you.